change our mindset, transform our financial reality. Sure, that sounds easy enough, but what if we're feeling stuck? What if we don't have time to transform our reality because we're too busy making ends meet? Not to worry, it becomes easy to shift our paradigm if we can clearly see where we're at in this moment. And today, that's exactly what we're going to do. have different stories. You have your own set of unique experiences, beliefs, and ways of looking at the world. But that said, once you know your wealth archetype, it becomes very easy to focus in on what information will be the most useful to you. The six wealth archetypes are the caged lion, the chained magician, the hustling treasure hunter, the innocent prisoner, the castaway, and the unfulfilled king or queen. As we go through these, feel into which one resonates most with you. Starting from the top, picture that you are a caged lion, the king of the jungle, wild, fierce, born to hunt. But one day you were captured by hunters and put in a cage. You say to yourself, I'm gonna get out of here and then you'll see how dangerous I am. But over time, you grow tired and soon you are thrown a piece of meat. You try to resist because you are the king of the jungle, but you need to survive and so you eat it. Day after day, month after month, you slowly become accustomed to eating the meat you're given. You're not starving, but you're never truly satisfied. You get trapped in this routine and there's a voice screaming inside of you, frustrated, angry, and impatient. And then the doubt creeps in. I've been stuck in this cage for so long. Do I still have what it takes to hunt? What if I can't survive on my own? The caged lion is the frustrated nine to five employee. These are the people who know they can provide for themselves and they can be successful in life, but that life has been sacrificed for the predictable routine, even though it makes them miserable inside. But what if I told you the key to unlocking the cage is dangling right in front of you? And sometimes the lion tamer leaves the door unlocked because he believes you don't have the guts to step through it. Well, let's move on to the next archetype for now, but we shall return. The second archetype is the chained magician. Imagine you are a powerful magician. You have powers most people can only dream of. You are filled with creativity, energy, and imagination. Boundless energy that allows you to think fast, learn fast, and act quickly. However, the village elders around you have prohibited you from using your powers so that other people in the village who cannot use magic won't feel threatened. Your powers are unique and different and they go against conventional wisdom. Even though you can bring great change for your village, the elders warn that staying with tradition is safer than trying something new. The chained magician represents all of the millennials and new generation of talent who feel suffocated and pressured by their parents and society. People who have heard their whole lives, play it safe. Nobody in our family has ever done that before. You can't make a living doing that. Get a degree, get a good job, get married, and buy a house. That's the life for you. And so on. Remember, going on your own path instead of what others have told you doesn't mean you don't love them. You might feel alone and misunderstood, but as you go out into the world and pave your own trail, you discover that there are far more magicians like you out in the world. You can take off the chains anytime because the only one who can stop a magician is themselves. Next, we have the hustling treasure hunter who loves to go on adventures and find the next biggest chest of gold. They love the thrill of the chase, the allure of the new opportunity, going after the shiny objects in the sand. But it seems like finding treasure maps are far more exciting than the actual search for the treasure chest itself. When they find a new map, they exclaim, you wait, once I find the treasure, I'll be set for life and you'll be sorry that you missed out. However, as they follow the map, they realize it requires them to chart rough seas and uncompromising landscapes. And so they quit. They say, ah, oh, there's no treasure. The map lied, but don't worry. The next treasure map, the right one for me, is out there and I'll succeed on my quest. These are people with lottery mentality, believing that external forces are what determine success. 
They jump into the latest money-making schemes like Bitcoin, network marketing, drop shipping, day trading, and so on. They announce they've found the opportunity of a lifetime, but when it doesn't work out at first, they're quick to jump to their plan B, their plan C, and their plan D. If we recall Think and Grow Rich, however, we all face temporary setbacks and we must be willing to persist through them to gain our wealth. The hustling treasure hunter can achieve such great wealth as long as they can follow their map to the end with passion, commitment, and love. The fourth archetype is the innocent prisoner. Imagine you were jailed for a crime you didn't commit. How would you feel if you had followed all of the rules played by the books, did everything right, and still ended up a prisoner? These are the people who did well in school, got good grades, listened to their parents, maybe even earned a scholarship. Perhaps they became doctors, lawyers, accountants, engineers, but deep down, they aren't fulfilled. They appear successful on the outside, but inside they are stressed, burned out, and empty. Some even take antidepressants to aid their low humming anxiety. They say, I did everything I was supposed to do. So why do I feel lost and empty inside? What did I do wrong? The biggest struggle here is that they don't think they can stop living this way because it would be irresponsible. And so they bottle it up and the feelings get worse. The mistake of the innocent prisoner is believing that conventional wisdom was the key to happiness instead of listening to their own heart's calling. The fifth archetype is the castaway. Imagine you're in a plane crash in the middle of the ocean, the only survivor who washes up on shore. You realize you are truly alone and you must fend for yourself. You build yourself a shelter, you hunt your own food, you even make a fire. But every day it's a hustle. You can't preserve food, so you're always on the hunt, always just surviving. And this routine becomes your life for years. The castaway is the struggling solo entrepreneur. You are starting your own business, but you feel alone. Every day is a struggle, hunting for food and water to survive. You're always on the lookout for new clients or fulfilling the jobs of others. If you get paid, you can afford to eat. When you find your first client, it's like starting a fire for the first time. You want to celebrate, but you have nobody to celebrate with. The castaway has to do everything in their company and are never quite making it to the point when they can rest, because if they stop working, they will not survive. The mistake of the castaway is living life as a lone wolf. While they have what most consider freedom, they are lonely and they have no long-term sense of future certainty. And finally, we have the unfulfilled king or queen. This was the person who conquered many obstacles and are finally sitting on the throne. It wasn't easy. You've worked hard for years or decades to get to this position and you have everything you've ever wanted, fortune, lifestyle, and status. But for some reason, your happiness is fleeting. Instead of joy, other things fill your mind. What if other kingdoms attack or try to take you over? So you build up your army or fortify your defenses and you feel satisfaction for just a moment. And then another fear sets in and you itch for the next achievement. This archetype is the overachiever, the one who is always at the top of their class, worked hard, succeeded in life, pushed to get ahead. Perhaps it's a talented CEO, an executive, senior partner, or other high up position. But deep down, they're afraid that their peers will outperform them and strip them of their title that they've worked so hard for. But from this place of motivation, achievement does not lead to happiness. It's a trap. They have to achieve more and achieve more and inside they're still unfulfilled. The mistake of the unfulfilled king or queen is the one who finds it hard to be satisfied unless they outdid everyone else. As a wise person once said, you can't win the race of fulfillment running on the track of achievement. Now, this brings us to the end of our wealth archetypes. Do any of these sound like you? If so, don't worry, you're not alone. And I have good news. Each one of these has a solution for it, if not multiple solutions. We're going to explore these solutions in the next section of the series. However, if you're interested in going deeper into all of it right now, allow me to introduce you to the book from which these archetypes come from. It's called Unlock It by Dan Locke, the same author as F.U. Money that I shared with you previously. Unlock It is Dan's latest book, and truly it is a spiritual successor to F.U. Money in every way. 
It's an absolutely wonderful book, and if you feel the call, I would recommend checking it out. Next week, we're gonna look at how to truly become a master of your spiritual money. But if you are ready to go all the way right now, here's a link to unlock it. It's very much worth a read. Thank you so much, and I'll see you again soon.